Welcome to 9 Nerd Yards. Considering most of the content I cover on this channel, you probably wouldn't guess that one of my favorite movies of all time is this little film called Portrait of a Lady on Fire. It's an extremely French period film about two women falling in love over the course of a few days and the emotions that build up when they have to leave the affair behind. When it first came out in 2019, my cisgendered black ass was not ready for this visually vibey masterpiece. It's definitely in my top 10. And it's not 10. For context, when I got my new LG OLED 9000 or whatever, it was the first movie I put on. I even forgot to take the plastic off. You probably have heard about the praise this movie received. I mean, 2019 was a crazy year for foreign language films considering Parasite also dropped that year. But for some reason, this one has still managed to stick with me because of how surprised I was after watching it. From the first few frames, you can tell you're watching something special. It was specifically filmed in 8K to retain as much color resulting in basically every shot being a portrait on on fire and most people who've seen the movie always gush about the cinematography but today i would like to talk about the musical choices in the film specifically one musical scene at the very end of the movie so if you haven't watched it yet i will be spoiling the film but i don't think that even matters for this one you should still watch the movie just to experience it but first let's talk about perspective we begin with marianne an artist that has been offered a job to paint a portrait of a heir of wealthy french aristocrats eloise but there's a twist she She's painting a portrait of Eloise that is meant to be sent to the man she has been given away to in marriage. But Eloise is not trying to get married, so every previous attempt to have her portrait painted has ended in disaster. So Marianne's job is also a bit of a ruse. Marianne has to go and hang out with Eloise as a quote unquote companion, and then at the end of the day, try to paint a portrait of Eloise from memory. Very sneaky stuff. So when we start off, we are very much in the know of what perspective we're taking. Marianne is the artist meant to craft, and Heloise is the subject that has very little agency meant to be crafted. Ça fait des années que je rêve de faire ça. Mourir. Courir. And what transpires between the two can only be described as scintillating. As Heloise becomes more and more suspicious of Marianne's true purpose of being there, we see the subject of the art start to gaze upon the artist. The artist starts to become the subject, and the lines of how we perceive Marianne and Heloise's relationship blurs as they fall in love. Around the end of the first act, Heloise talks about how she doesn't want to move to Milan and get married to some random dude. Fair enough. Marianne tries to comfort her, saying that there's a lot of cool shit in Milan, like an orchestra. However, Heloise has never been to an orchestra and asks Marianne to describe it, in which case Marianne says, Je n'ai pas facile de raconter la musique. So Marianne makes her way over to a harpy's chord and starts to play the third movement of summer from the Villadi's Four Seasons. At this point, that's when I realized that this film doesn't even have a score. Music is used three times in this film, and two of those three times is Vivaldi's Summer. So this is the first time music is introduced, and Marianne is trying her darndest to remember how to play the piece, and Heloise looks on as the admirer. The introduction of this piece of music is also when us as the audience perceive Heloise as someone other than the subject. And as Marianne puts it, this musical moment is a clear marker of the coming storm. Soon after this, Heloise finds out that Marianne is actually a painter only there to take the 18th century equivalent of nudes to send to some fucking guy that Heloise has to marry. And she's definitely not happy about that. C'était donc ça, vos regards. But nonetheless, we spend the next hour and a half of the movie watching these two women fall for each other ever more swiftly and deeply. A particular moment to note is when they read the story of Orpheus in Eurydice, the one about the guy who goes to the underworld to get his GF on the condition that he can lead them out of the underworld, but if he looks back at all, she gets sent back to Hades and can never return. So Orpheus and Eurydice almost make it out, but right before they do, Orpheus looks back and Eurydice gets spirited away never to escape the underworld. After reading this, Marianne and Eloise are conflicted about their representations of the story. Marianne says that Orpheus looked back because he decided to choose the memory of their love rather than to continue actually being together. Orpheus made the decision not as a lover, but instead makes the poet's choice. Eloise challenges this and says that maybe Eurydice told him to look back and it was actually her choice. Eloise making the point that Eurydice has a lot more agency than the story implies. Which brings me to the second time 
time we hear Summer by Vivaldi, the very end of the movie. Spoiler, Eloise and Marianne don't make it together. Eloise does go to marry that guy and start a family in Milan. And years later, Marianne goes to an orchestra in Milan and across the balcony notices Heloise. The camera pushes in closer and closer to Heloise until it's just her in frame. Marianne says that this is the last time she saw Heloise, and Heloise did not see her. And for three minutes, along with Marianne, we gaze upon Heloise, and we see the memories of her past love wash over her as Vivaldi's strings warn of an impending storm. Louise listens emotionally overwhelmed. She cries and laughs and the music is swelling. I myself have definitely been through a breakup or two, but this last scene makes me consider myself to be so lucky to have ever loved so intensely that I can basically see what's going on in her mind as she thinks back to the first time she heard that song that makes her think about that one person and the movie just ends. It is still unclear to me if Eloise really didn't see Marianne. The part of me thinks that now settles in her new life with with her own agency, her own children, that she made the decision not to look back and return Marianne's artistic gaze, decided to preserve her love for Marianne as a memory, deciding not as a lover, but making the poet's choice. Shout out to Nando V Movies for bringing us another fantastic playlist that lets movie lovers like myself geek out on a particular scene. Last time it was one villainous scene, this time around it was one musical scene. Go check out the playlist and if you feel inspired, I urge you to make your own video as well and add to it. It's a really awesome project that Nando does every year and it's a great way to get your channel seen or just a starting off point to get your channel started if you needed a topic. I really wanted to get this one out so I brushed over a lot of stuff that makes this movie incredible but really if you haven't seen it check it out and see for yourself uh leave a comment and tell me what you think about the movie like and subscribe and i'll paint you a portrait 